Hi, this video will discuss cost minimization, focusing on the last dollar rule. And I'll explain what this is momentarily. So this is our third part of the cost minimization, where cost minimization part one focused on how to minimize costs using the lowest ISO cost rule. Cost minimization part two focused on the maximizing output given a firm's level of ISO cost or the tangency rule. And this is the third one of the sequence of how a firm chooses its optimal input combination or how it cost minimizes. And in this one is probably the most intuitive of the three approaches. This is known as the last dollar rule. What this means is a firm will pick the bundle of inputs where its last dollar spent on an input, such as capital, provides as much additional output as a last dollar spent on the other input, labor. So this says, in other words, you get a, a similar bang for your buck from that last dollar from each of your two inputs. Because if you didn't, if spending one dollar more on a worker got you an increase in output more so than spending a dollar on a machine, you simply would reallocate the dollar, spend a dollar more on workers, and a dollar less on machines. So at the end, when you're done and you're optimizing your input bundle, the last dollar you spend on the machine gets you the same output as the last dollar spent on a worker. So let's go to the image to help us understand this concept. So here's the picture we have in mind. You want to find the optimal input combination the cost minimizing way to spend two thousand dollars and be able to produce a hundred units of output. So where this optimal bundle occurs is here at point X and at point X we have the slopes are equivalent between our inputs and our output. So right here at this point X our isoquant, the line in pink its slope is the MRTS. This is the isoquant slope. That is equivalent to the isocost slope here in blue. The isocost slope is negative W over R. So the last dollar rule is going to say, let's equate these two slopes, MRTS, slope of isoquant, with negative W over R, the slope of the isocost. Okay, and that's done here. These two slopes are equal. MRTS slope is this ratio of marginal productivities. So I'm sorry for the algebra here, but let's equate these two. You get this expression. And finally, let's move wage over here to the left side, so divide both sides by W. Let's move marginal productivity capital to the right side, so multiply both sides by MPK, and you're left with this last bottom expression. This is our last dollar rule. So what this last dollar rule says is you get, when you divide your marginal productivity of labor divided by your wage rate, this tells you the value or the benefit from one dollar spent more on a worker. On the right side, this MPK over R tells you the last dollar you spend running a machine, how much more output you get. And it better be the case that, as I mentioned earlier, that these two provide the same level of productivity. So now, let's go to the graph again. So in this graph at point X, the tangency, the optimal bundle, where your cost minimizing, the last dollar you spend on a worker, this NPL over W, provides the same amount of additional output as the last dollar spent on a machine. MPK over R. In this example, we're given some MPL over MPK ratios. We're given some wages and some um, rental prices of machines. And you put those numbers in, you get 0.05 for each. So in words, this says one more dollar spent on a worker gets you 1 20th or 0.05 more units of output. Or one dollar spent more on a machine gets you 1 20th more or 0.05 more output. One more thing, a more oh, intuitive approach is the following. Comparing the wages with the machine rental prices. 
we see wages are 24 and machine rental prices are 8. Or wages are three times the cost of your machines. In this case, it better be the case that your marginal productivity of labor better be three times as productive as your marginal productivity of capital. Or else, these will not be equivalent. And in this case, we see MPL is 1.2. MPK is 0.4. So in this example, the marginal productivity of labor is three times as productive as MPK. That's why 1.2 is three times the size as 0.4. That's why these two expressions are equivalent. But one last takeaway. What if MPL were only twice as productive as MPK, yet it costs you three times as much to hire a worker? How should the firm reallocate your resources? Well, according to the last dollar rule, if this were the case, if this were 1.2 and this were 0.6, this would no longer be equal, but instead, what we would have is we would have that were 0.6, then if this were 0.6, then suddenly the, this expression is larger, and this would say, oh, spend the last dollar more on a machine and one less dollar on a worker, because this is where you are most productive, spending a dollar more here, if it were the case that MPK were 0 0.6 instead of 0 0.4. Finally, one last example to illustrate the last dollar rule is, what if we were at point Y and we thought um, incorrectly this was the optimal bundle? Well, in that case, of course, it's not tangent, so that's not the optimal bundle. But in this case, let's just go through the example that we have and the numbers we have for MPL and W. What we find for MPL over W, putting the numbers in, we get 0.1. Spending a dollar more on a worker gets us one-tenth of a unit of output, increase in output. What if we spent that last dollar on a machine? Well, the MPK over R gets us to put the ratio in, we get 0.017, or approximately 1 50th of an increase in output. So where is the last dollar best spent? Is it on a worker that gets us 0.1 more units of output, or is it on a machine that gets us 0.017 more units of output? Of course, it's more productive here to hire additional workers. Spend a dollar more on a worker, a dollar less on a machine, and you will increase your output. That's why Y is not the optimal bundle. These are equivalent at point X.